If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Freshly showered, this is how messy my hair can look. And she's freshly showered too, this is how messy her hair can look. This is my baby, this is Evangeline. Uh, I just wanted to do a little walk and talk uh, while I while I have her and while you're awake because it's gonna be nap time it's gonna be long nap time before too long oh yeah but before you go to sleep we're going to get a, a little walk and talk in uh, I saw not terribly long ago a blog a tog post which means it's Mark Rosewater's uh, Tumblr and he was asked a question about if there are going to be more substantial uh, reprints going on. And his response was that, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, ooh, it's getting dark. <laughs> That's what I get for being in the shade. Um, his response was that uh, getting cards out in standard that are good in modern is difficult to do because the power level in modern is much higher than it is in standard. Uh, he specifically gave the instance, and this will be on the screen, and hopefully I'll remember to put a link in the description below as well. Um, the, the specific example he gave was Thoughtseize, which he thought was too strong for standard. Now, Thoughtseize is still a fairly expensive card, right? For how much of a staple it is in the format, in modern. And yet, he's talking about how it was a mistake to print Thoughtseize, to reprint Thoughtseize in Theros. Uh, imagine how much it would be if it didn't get that printing. Good grief. Um, but I think that that speaks to something about the logic of reprints that we don't see, we as players don't see that they see. Uh, which is, uh, so for most people the obvious response to that is, well, you don't have to print it in standard, right? And that's true, you don't have to print it in standard. You have commander products, you have offsets like Conspiracy, you have dual decks. I don't know if they still do like event decks or dual decks or what is it that they don't do with those anymore. Um, you could come up with other supplementary products. The issue with that obviously is that you don't get as many out as if the cards reprinted in standard. So there's a bit of a dilemma that goes on. If you want the card reprinted it can be done in something like Eternal Masters or another supplementary product. Uh, but if that happens it's very limited and it won't be enough usually to meet demand. If you get it printed in standard it can meet demand and you can actually even use it to sell more packs. But then you worry about the power level of standard. Now ignoring the specific example of Thoughtseize as to whether that was too strong for standard. I mean, well not completely ignoring, I, I don't think it actually was too strong. Yeah, that's a car. It's a car they went by. But I, I can see from where he's coming. If you run, a, if you have a black deck in standard, you ran Thoughtseize, right? For a while, for a long while, you just ran Thoughtseize. No questions asked. Um, so that being the case, I hate to say, but this is sort of just what is bound to happen when you have a game that has a standard and a, an eternal format at the same time. It's sort of just inevitable. If you have a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, there is no standard in that game. It's all one great big format, and that format is what Magic players would call Legacy. Well, and then there's Vintage. There's Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh too, but no one plays that. There's Sealed, but that's a very slight format. And then there's some uh, casual formats like Goats. But the only real big sanctioned format is just Legacy. It's called Advanced in Yu-Gi-Oh, but you get the idea. On the other hand, you could have a game like Pokemon, which doesn't have an eternal format. And when that's the case, you can tailor, you don't have to worry about reprinting cards for the most part, because although you can play reprints, you can play older versions of a card in standard, you know, once the card is out of standard, it's kind of worthless. So it, it, people aren't clamoring for a reprint of it. Um, but when you have a game like Magic that tries to do both, 
They, it tries to have an eternal and a standard format. That's inevitable. You can try to bite the bullet. You can try to reprint the card in a standard and just hope it doesn't overpower the format. And sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, sometimes it'll skirt the line, like Thought says. Or you can try supplementary products and hope that that meets demand, assuming that's your objective. Uh, uh, this is all operating under the assumption that as R&D, as wizards, you're trying to meet player demand and not break a format. That isn't necessarily the case, though. There is another assumption. You could be trying to meet collectors' demands. And collectors don't want you to reprint cards, or want you to reprint them so infrequently that it doesn't make that much of a difference. I see you over there. I see you with your fingers in your mouth. <sighs> so that's... That's the dilemma that they face. And I don't have the perfect answer for it. Um, just... You can try to make less limited uh, master series, so like Modern Masters, Eternal Masters, you can try to make them less limited. Uh, but again, Wizards especially is a game, I mean, is a company that really looks out for its collectors. Um, if they were like Konami does with, I mean, with Yu-Gi-Oh, Konami figured it out. Reprint the cards 500 times and you make a lot of money. And as a result, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is the largest trading card game in the world, by number of cards, and that's not my opinion. Uh, take that up with the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, that's not my opinion, they just are. At least assuming that that record still holds. Um, so yeah, that, that's what happens when you reprint, but of course, the downside to that is that collectors don't want to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Your cards will get reprinted, probably will get reprinted a lot, in this gold series, and the next gold series, and the next gold series after that. And then it won't be worth much. Mirror Force was a $40 card. It's not even five now. <laughs> yeah. So, you could go about that way, but they're not going to do that, because Wizards realizes that, I mean, collectors do have value. I mean, <laughs> I'm not that kind of collector. I. I, w I am a player first and foremost, but I recognize that there's some value in that. Um, but they wouldn't be as high of a priority for me, I suppose. But this is all just my opinion at this point. Um, that's the problem. That's my hashing out of the solution. Not an actual solution, just talking about it. And I'll let you think over that. So that's it, and it's also a chance for me to show off my baby. Hey there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I see you. We all see you. Can you say bye-bye? Oh. Okay. My little Stoneforge, my little T1 Stoneforge Mystic. See? Boots. <laughs> that's the word. All you have to do is just say, Boots. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you later. There we go. Bye-bye. <laughs>